All right, thank you so much, Brooke. And now we have Monica Trinnell joining us. Thank you so Good much, morning, Monica. Good morning, Heidi. Our How viewers are, you? are so glad you would get up this early. Great to be here. Yeah. yeah. The Democratic candidate for the uh, Western seat in Congress here, representing Montana. I want to yeah. jump off um, right away with the lumber mill possible closures yeah. in Missoula County. Analysts are saying this could cost them 250 jobs. Yeah, really sad to hear the news about Pyramid Lumber and Sealy Lake. So I've been traveling the 16 counties in this new congressional district. I've put 20,000 miles on my minivan meeting with folks and I've toured actually two of the five sawmills that are in this district and met with folks at, at Stoltz and Sun Mountain Lumber. Mm -hmm. So pretty familiar with some of the issues that are going on and really super sad to hear about the pyramid closing. But I think what we're really looking at across western Montana are the costs, <laughs> high prices and housing are the issues that mm -hmm. we're facing. Mm -hmm. So in Sealy Lake, when I was up there talking to the school, they said there were three homes for sale and they were all over $700,000. Hmm. So, it, it, you know, a lot of this really comes down to housing, but with the forest products, the, you know, uh, sawmill industry specifically, I have very intentionally and very carefully talked to folks, gotten information, and I will stand by our partners because this is an important industry in Western Montana. And we need to make sure that we're focusing on innovative solutions that help this industry work. So looking for ways to keep the Roseburg plant open here in Missoula and the, um, mm. and the pyramid um, lumber mill open as well. Because I think that, you know, the infrastructure act that was um, brought a lot of resources to Western Montana, there are opportunities and funding resources in there that we can hmm. potentially partner with. So I, you know, I'd love to um, meet with them and I have a meeting set up for next week. I'm gonna go up and talk with them and see, you know, what do they need from their federal partners and how can we work with them to keep these jobs in Montana and to address the high prices and the cost of housing, which is really fundamentally the issue that I'm seeing across the district. Okay, in that note, uh, I wanted to ask you about homelessness and housing. Some states yeah. um, are going to, I don't want to say extreme measures, but they're really taking some bold measures to try to um, face the homelessness crisis that's growing everywhere. Yeah, it's a national issue, but it's really across western Montana. It is the issue that I hear. And if I hear something else like labor, you peel back the layer of the onion and it's housing. So, you know, I've met with people from Libya, uh, Kalispell, Gallatin County, Dillon, um, you know, and it's housing, housing everywhere. If you're 18 years old, the issue that you hear about that I'm hearing is I can't find a place to rent or live. I have three daughters, um, I have three siblings, and my mom is in a nursing home in this district. I have three other siblings in the state, and between us we have 21 uh, next generation Trinnell people. And, you know, this issue is very close to me and to my family. So we, uh, you know, I have direct family between five and 90 in this district. Nursing homes are closing. Housing is the issue. So, but there are solutions. Our communities are working hard on this. Kalispell, Whitefish, they have a land trust. So they're figuring out how to get people into houses that won't cost so much. Big Sky. Bozeman, I met with folks all across the district, and there are real solutions happening on the ground, but they need action from their federal partners. So we need lower cost starter homes. We need trailer parks that are closing because they're being bought by private equity. So we, we need to help the people who are really struggling. Okay. And we can do that. We have the answers. And a lot of them are actually being implemented on the ground right now. So it's really exciting. For me, I will be prepared on day one to work with our state and our local um, officials who are really tackling these issues and coming up with some, some good ideas, some good solutions. We didn't get here overnight. We're not gonna get out of it overnight, but I think we can address the acute problem of people who actually don't have a roof over their heads right now. And we can also look at this as a long-term strategy planning. Um, process. So one example right here in Missoula, the Villaggio, the new housing that was on the north side, I'm sure you've seen mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So what I've heard is some of those units, they're ready to be moved into, but they're sitting empty because of the um, average median income, the area median income. So that sets, because they were built um, with tax credits, you have to qualify 
with a certain AMI and if you're a teacher, if you're, say you have a couple, one's a teacher, one's a law enforcement officer, they're already priced out of that because hmm. of the AMI. So these are things that can be fixed at the federal level and I'm ready to do it on day one. I've been working on this, talking to folks across the district. I know the issues, I know the answers and I'll partner with you to make it happen on day one. Okay. I want to move on to the national debt. I recently read in the Associated Press that it was not projected to surpass that $34 trillion mark until 2029, but then the pandemic yeah. hit and brought it closer. It's really affecting interest rates, pe people's ability to, say, get a loan. What are the answers there? It's a real problem, and I am super uh, conservative fiscally, and I think we need to live within our means, and we need to get that under control. So one of the biggest answers is looking at the contributors to what's causing the national debt. I mean, it's a budget balancing exercise, right? So the tax cuts of 2017 that Ryan Zinke uh, supported and voted for, those tax cuts have been a huge driver of the spike in the national debt. So we need to, you know, balance the budget. We need to, if we're going to spend on the Department of Defense the way we are, then we have to have revenues coming in. So the, uh, those tax cuts are set to expire, and I think they need to expire so that everybody is paying their fair share. Look, in Missoula, you get a job waiting tables, you pay taxes on dollar one. Isn't it fair that people who are making a billion dollars a year coming here, buying second, third, fourth houses like Ryan Zinke, who's a corporate landlord in Whitefish, isn't it fair that they pay, pay their fair share too? I mean, our, you know, the biggest and the most wealthiest people need to pay as much as, as people who wait tables and pay uh, taxes on dollar one. Okay. Well, Monica, that's the time we have. So <laughs> thank you so much yeah, for great, addressing great some here. of these um, topics. And we'll speak with you again along the way here. Yep. This yeah. is my home. I don't have another one. And I'm looking forward to serving Montana, okay. the place I love. Thanks, Yeah, Heidi. thanks again. Yeah. Thanks, Monica. And now, Brooke, we'll send it back to you with a look at...